Hello and welcome. In this channel, we break down complicated topics in easy to understand knowledgeable bits. We added timestamps below for your convenience. Let's get started. What problem do Western blots solve for scientists? Well, if you're working with an organism, it's gonna have a complex array of proteins and a Western blot will give you information about whether the protein is present and in what amount. It's a great way of separating out your protein of interest from all of the proteins within the cell system. In the first step, a buffer is added into a small test tube with the cells of your choice. The buffer and some heat will start the process of denaturing the proteins from the complex 3D structures into their corresponding linear amino acids. As it can be observed from a three-dimensional globular uh, protein being denatured into a linear fashion is very important for the next step. Now that you added your cocktail of proteins, to be able to accurately compare the amount of proteins you have when you analyze the final gel, you must ensure that you add roughly the same amount of protein in each well. For that task, you must complete a BCA assay, which we won't cover in this video, but we will have linked in the description below if you are interested. In this step, you load your samples into the gel. In the first well, a ladder is usually added to use as a point of reference. It will generate multiple bands, and each band has a known location and size. The proteins separate because the gel is not solid, but porous. Simply put, it has various random holes throughout the gel. The bigger the protein, the longer it takes for it to travel through the gel. We could assume that the purple protein being the largest is going to move the least as it will have to overcome friction and will interact with, uh, not chemically, but will will interact with the porous matrix of the gel. The, the medium sized band we could assume would be the yellow as it is the second to, to biggest band and the red protein we could assume moved down the well the furthest that is, as it is the smallest and will have the least amount of trouble moving down the band. Once you have added the protein into the wells, it typically is added into a device similar to the one shown at the far right corner. Where the tank contains buffer, the electrode chamber holds the gel cassette so that the electricity can be added, and that will be shown in the next step. The SDS that was added earlier as a detergent in the buffer solution reacts with the protein in the mixture, and it coats all of the proteins with a negative charge, which is important when you add the electrical current as depicted by the black box here. The proteins with the negative charge will travel away from the positive electrode, which is on top, and the negative electrode, which is towards the bottom. We then create a sandwich composed of a gel, a membrane, a filter paper, and a foam pad. After we apply another electrical current, the bands we see in the gel will transfer horizontally into the filter paper. Why do we need to do this step? Because when we stain with antibodies, the gel would not stain correctly, therefore we have to use an inert filter paper. Now this next step allows the scientist the ability to choose which proteins he wants to select from the, the mixture of proteins. If you have a mixture of proteins, A through D, and you want to select protein A, you would choose an antibody that binds only to A and not to B, C, or D. After you add the first antibody to select for protein A, you then have to add a special secondary antibody that selects only antibody A, which has attached a molecule that will give fluorescence or another signal that is detected by a machine. To recap, what can a Western blot tell you? Well, it is very useful for the isolation of specific proteins in a protein mixture using specific antibodies. It can tell you the size of the protein of interest. It could tell you a rough quantity of that protein, and it could tell you the quantity of that protein over time. For example, in lane one, we see that this dark protein, the darker it is, the higher expression or the greater the concentration of that protein. The thicker the band could signify a larger concentration of that protein. To determine the size of the protein, we can use the ladder for reference. And column one is between our ladder 37 and 25 kilodaltons. So we can assume that the, our protein of interest in column one is probably between 36 and 35 kilodaltons in size. As you can tell by the, the, the band in column two, there is a smaller concentration of that protein, but you can tell that the size is 25. 